Hey guys, and what's going on? Welcome back to another Farming with Carp video where we talk about all things cover crop and definitely no-till. I appreciate you guys stopping in on this one. If you're new, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. All right, guys, so as you can see, we're out here in a beautiful sea of cereal rye and uh, I kind of want to talk a little bit about cover crops today and kind of what covers we use in our rotations for corn and soybeans. Now, if you guys have been at the channel a while, you kind of know what we do, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we're using them for. And really, I want to give an update on the growth here because here in the last couple weeks, the growth of this rye has absolutely exploded uh, and it's been phenomenal. We've had great weather. Uh, unfortunately, we have got some cold weather moving in though uh, to where we're going to get below freezing, which is going to kind of stall or set this rye back just a little bit. All right, so here you can see the rye. It looks pretty good. It's fairly thick. The rows are starting to close here in spots. Like you look in front of me, uh, the rye is getting real thick. It's looking nice. You're starting to not see. Uh, the old map from last year, which here's the old map from last year. But the rye is coming along, you know, it's probably six to eight inches now. Some spots a little taller. Uh, but the rye has made a huge jump in the last couple weeks, like I said. The weather here has been phenomenal. No complaints whatsoever. Hey, would you look at that? Looks like we got an old soybean from last year we missed. Yeah, it doesn't look so good now. We missed one, but yeah. So the rise exploded. It looks really good. It's really coming along. Absolutely phenomenal growth on it here. So the cereal rye for us is a huge suppressant of weeds in both our corn and our soybean rotation. We pretty much rely 100% on cereal rye uh, in our soybean rotation. And you know, over this farm's history, We've kind of started, you know, 50, 60, 70 pounds, worked our way up to 80, 90. Last year we did 100 pounds. And then this year we were doing 150 pounds. So last year, or last fall, drilled 100 pounds and broadcasted 50 pounds. Now that is on the field that is going to soybeans on all those acres. Uh, and then on our acres going to corn, we only did 50 pounds cereal rye drilled. Now, as a lot of you know, but if you don't know, we also put in 10 pounds of vetch and 5 pounds of clover. So that is what we've got for our soybeans. It's pretty much predominantly cereal rye. And our corn is vetch, rye, and clover. So if you're new to the channel, that's kind of what we're going with. Uh, a, to give wheat suppression in the soybeans and the corn. And then also B, in the corn, uh, to get a little bit of nitrogen out there for the corn crop. So that's kind of where we're at and what we're using. But it's just a beautiful day here in Indiana. I'm out here in the field just around the house. I just wanted to walk around it and see what kind of growth we're getting. You can see the growth, the growth from the road, uh, but it's always nice to get out here and walk and see what things are actually looking like. I think today here in Indiana, you can see I'm in my t-shirt. So I think it's pushing 70 degrees. Uh, it's windy, there's no doubt about it, but it's honestly a really, really nice day. It's a good drying day. We do have some rain coming, but... Now, obviously, the rye is used for a huge wheat suppressant for us. But, I mean, there's many other things it's doing. Now, you know, we're helping with compaction, uh, erosion control, whether that be wind, water. Uh, we're sequestering carbon. So we're doing a lot of good things with this cereal rye. There's a lot of advantages to cereal rye. So that leaves me a question for you guys in the audience. Uh, if there are any cover crop users in the audience, uh, what kind of cover crops are you guys using? Are you guys using anything that different that we need to be looking into? We have experimented with a lot of cover crops here. We do a lot of mixes, a lot of 15 way mixes, five way mixes, 16 way mixes. We do a lot of mixes, but predominantly for most of the acres, we're doing cereal rye for soybeans and then a cereal rye with two complimentary uh, legumes for this year. That's kind of where we're at. I just want to know where you guys are at. What covers are you guys using? How are you terminating? 
I want to get to know you guys a little bit better uh, in your overall farming practices because maybe we can help each other. That's what is so great about this platform is we can converse via comments or what have you. Or you can get a hold of me. Email's always in the description below. Instagram's in the description below. So I like conversing with you guys. But tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing. So this field that we are in right now has actually been bean on bean uh, the last two years. So we've had beans here the last two years. And with that, you know, we've got a heck of a of an old dead rye mat out here that's absolutely just protecting the soil but here's where you can see i mean the soil on top is not too bad a little tacky yet but uh, i just saw an earthworm there's an earthworm right there so this is another beautiful thing i mean our soil is healthy we've got a lot of worms in here we have a lot of worms now, if you guys will flash back to uh, when we had the weed zapper last year, I've got some questions on if the weed zappers have hurt our worm population or anything like that. And I haven't seen it do that yet. We still have an abundance of worms. And even from the manufacturers, they say you're not really going to harm any of the worms or any of that uh, biological activity going on in the soil. And I, I agree with them. We haven't seen anything yet. But obviously it's still early in this next growing season, so it could be some repercussions we could see, but I'm going to say we're not. But this field out here overall looks really good. This rye is growing. It's just a sea of green out here, as you can tell. Now some of these thicker patches you're seeing might be some cereal rye we threw out of the combine last year. We did have some spots where the rye always, we have some spots where the rye doesn't crimp very well and then it goes to seed and you're harvesting the seed through the combine and a lot of times we'll spit it out uh, the back of the combine so if you're seeing some lumpiness or clumpiness that's from that and another thing see if I can find it if we can see any wheel tracks on where the weed zapper ran last year it pounded some rye into the ground when the tractor drove over it and it's got some taller spots so I think I can see some up here maybe where the wheel tracks were from the 8430 and the weed zapper. So like right here, you can see all the way down, it's a little bit taller and thicker. So chances are that when we ran the weed zapper, a tire ran, smashed some of the cereal ride down and uh, it started germinating in the last fall well early, like uh, late September, early October. So it's got a little bit of growth ahead of some of the other stuff that's been planted. But overall, very happy with how this rye's looking. It's coming along quite well. We do have several acres actually that are ahead of this field that look quite a bit better. Where the beans came off first thing last year, late September. Even a couple fields where we had peas last year, we put some rye out there. Going to soybeans and that rye is tall. I mean, it's tall, it's thick, it looks good. And a lot of our fields where we've got clover, we've got some, some red mammoth clover that is in a mix that's going to corn. That clover is thick and it's out there. We kind of touched on that uh, in one of our last update videos on the fields. And it looks really good. So we are sitting way, way, way more comfortable this year where we're at at this time frame than we were last year. Last year we got everything out so late uh, biggest issue with that was one combine and we were broke down I think we lost about eight good days of harvest just from being broke down so having two combines this year being able to get the crops out in a much much more timely fashion has accelerated us to where we are now and it's going to put us in a way better spot uh, this spring so super happy about that so let's take a good look here at this cereal rye let me get out of my own shadow here Let's take a good look. Here you can see the cereal rye. I mean, it's pretty darn tall. It's growing right here, it's growing good. And if we dig in here, you can see the vetch. So there's some vetch growing right there. We kind of have vetch everywhere. There's some more in here. Kind of got to dig for it, but it's here. 
there's another good piece of vetch right there if you can see it on the camera but we've got vetch everywhere now we have yet to see the clover i don't know if any of you deal with uh, fixation clover but it always seems to come on a little later you know we don't really see it till later like last year well, last year was an odd year because everything was just late so like the end of may early june is when we really started to see that clover climb and the biomass was incredible the biomass was incredible now ultimately that's the key to suppressing weeds is that word i just used biomass the more biomass you've got out here the better your fields are going to be from a weed management standpoint but the biomass on the fields last year from that clover were incredible i think they were up in the six eight twelve thousand pounds of biomass an acre don't quote me on that it's in one of my videos so i can't give you a, a affirmative on that but it's pretty close to that but i'm just out here checking it out but biomass biomass is what it all boils down to cereal rye can give you a ton of biomass and the taller you let it go the more biomass you get so with that don't just be coming out here i know a lot of people want to put it out there on their field uh, for like erosion and whatnot uh, for the winter to keep their soil together and they let it get about eight inches tall and they burn it down not opposed to that that's what they do but the more you let it grow the more biomass you can get if you have a means of terminating it other than chemical termination which we do but a lot of people probably don't but that is one way you get biomass let it grow we're not afraid to let that rye grow as tall as it will grow six feet tall we'll plant grain into it roll it 30 days later in soybeans probably a few days later in corn we're not afraid to do it but cover crops are what we're fond of it's what we use for being organic with our weed management and we have great success with them so just a little update talking about cover crops here uh, from indiana kind of seeing the growth here on this field just around the house uh, i will do another field tour here soon just to see how the other cover crops are coming along i'm sure you guys want to see that probably if you do leave a comment down below let me know what you want to see but i think that's probably going to be a good spot to wrap up this video here just out here checking out the cover crops seeing what they're doing so i appreciate you guys watching the video be sure to hit that like button if you like the video. Ask any questions down below if you want. And I'll see you guys on the next one.